Okay, okay guys. Okay guys. That'd be our cue. Hello, afternoon everyone. Hey, it's afternoon everyone. We've been <laughs> Scott, Scott's got a new girlfriend, his boyfriend. Yeah, he likes me a lot. Can you close in on them, Carolyn? Yes, I Get a good am. look. Mm -hmm. This is this is uh, from our Western Shepherd litter. We're going to show you a couple of them tonight. Just uh, since we're talking about different types of okay. breeds of mm -hmm. protection, working type, what people like to call working line dogs. Hey, there you go. See how sharp that one is. This one is seven weeks old, by the way. Oh, okay, I'm right here. Now oh. he's all excited because Carol Ann's making a little clucking noise to him. <laughs> so uh, we've got, if anyone's interested, I've had several calls on, on the Western Shepherd Club this week. It's okay, it's okay. It's okay. So just so you know it's okay, it's okay. How, how we work it, we breed two litters in the spring and two in the fall. So that's our first fall litter over there. She's 11 weeks old. And that's Mr. Traveler. That's going to be Carol Ann's new sidekick. And the little squeaky one up here is from our second fall litter. And he is at the moment nameless. Uh, but we're thinking about loud or, you know, maybe maybe uh, storm warning siren or something like that. We don't know. <laughs> Would you be siren? Would you be siren? Yeah. Yeah. So, anyway. We have, we have two males and a female left. If anyone's interested, give us a call. If you want to get in and be a part of the Western Shepherd Project and recreate the shepherd dog that Ren 1010 always hoped to be, this is, this is the two that can do that. Uh, we'll, we'll show you a little stuff on travel. If you, you wait till the end, we're going to get this 11-week-old puppy out and see if she can do anything at 11 weeks old. Yeah, she's knocking her camera But... Uh, now, anyway, we're going to talk about some protection dogs, right, Scott? Yes, we are. So we're talking <coughs> protection dogs like that, right? <laughs> yeah, like that. Yeah. We're going to go into the breeds, correct? Well, certain, you know, there's certain breeds. We're yeah, gonna... well, not necessarily breeds, but there's ty there's types, and then there's breeds. So there's right. mastiffs, and you have bull mastiffs, like carny corsos, right, and a lot of people today think that the only thing that can be a protection dog is a Malinois, or also known as a Belgian Shepherd. Belgian Shepherd. Yeah, and our Dutch Shepherds. Uh, they're getting away from the German Shepherd yeah, for some reason. Yeah, there's Massives, Conny Corsos, yeah. Dobies, Roddies. Right. You know, yeah. Giant Schnauzers. Gi yeah, I and forgot about the Giants. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so. but you've got three distinct classes, types, mm -hmm. Mastiffs, Herding Dogs, and Terriers. And we're going to just discuss which ones work best and what they're best at. And, and Traveler's moving the, the camera for Carol Ann there, so what do you think on them? What do you, let's start with the Mastiffs. What do you think about a Mastiffs for Can they do protection training? Very much so. They're more defensive, but to their advantage. To their advantage. And, yes. They draw you in, you know. It may look like a dog is backing out, but he's bringing you in. But they're big in size. They're very intimidating. Very intimidating, right? You know, different kind of bite than a uh, shepherd or mm -hmm. doby or anything else. Mm -hmm. But uh, tend to be more frontal, more defensive. Yeah, but very good dogs to me. Depending on what you're using for, also, you know, if you get pen protection or uh, patrol dogs, whatnot. There's other things, but them dogs there, you know, on a ranch or in a house. I mean, you can even make them do a guard in the guard dog business. They'd be great for that too. Oh yeah, yeah. So they except, got, except they ate too much. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I guess it all depends on tailor your dog to what you want it to do, or what you're looking for. Well, but and you're right. Each one of these types, I think they're capable of everything, but there's some things they will naturally train for easier or excel at like because mastiffs what people don't realize is the first war dog the first police dogs were all mastiffs and so the bull mastiff was specialized in Eng England you know we looked to Germany for for dogs and, and Germany never really created breeds so much as they perfected breeds mm -hmm. that other people had 
So England has made a lot of really great breeds, and the, the Mastiffs, they're really, really, between their bull baiting for bulldogs and then their Mastiffs for war, think of the, the Bull Mastiff, if you're familiar with them, not as popular as they used to be, but their job was to guard the, the, the forests and the estates of the king against deer poachers, because people, peasants that are starving to death would go out and hunt a deer, <laughs> and all the deer belonged to the king, and they didn't want nobody eating, you know, unless they paid the king something. So the Bull Mastiff was developed to patrol the forests and, and lands of the, of the king, and the, the story goes, I don't know how, you know, true it is, but the sales pitch for the Bull Mastiff was they were naturally inclined to run down poachers, but rather than mauling them, they would knock them to the ground and stand over them and dare them to move. They would hmm. hold them. So, uh, so it's an English Mastiff with the now extinct Old English Bulldog. Yeah. So it's basically yeah. 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 it was a cross. It was a cross. But they they have natural guardian instincts. They're, they're yes. naturals. That, that's it. But you got to train them a certain way to get to bring it all out. But but they have. It. But it's there. It's yeah. automatic. It's like the herding dogs are, you know. Herding dogs are going to naturally chase sheep or cows or your feet if they're puppies. The mastiffs will naturally protect a territory or a perimeter. So if you're a person that's got you know, maybe you've got a couple acres somewhere, mm -hmm. and you're looking for a protection dog, but you don't want to spend 50,000 bucks, but you want a good dog that's gonna live on your property, you're gonna make sure strangers don't intrude, get a master. Mm -hmm. They're naturals. I agree. Yeah. So, what's our next group? Uh, herding dogs. Shepherds, yeah. mm -hmm. mouths, mm -hmm. you know, very high prey driven dogs. But, you know, to me, they're very smart and they're very adaptable to almost every situation you can come across. As well, to me, most of the other breeds can do it all too, but in general, the shepherds and what the, the herding dogs. To me, you have a broader range of... The way to put it, yeah. You know. Yeah, they're more versatile. They're versatile, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And if you... the <clears throat> So the first recorded police dog, the first incidences of cops using dogs was 1860 or 70, I forget which, where they were... I can't remember if it was the Polish or the German police, but they used a bunch of Danes to run some gypsies out of, I guess they were the gypsies were. Really? I guess the gypsies she were the agrees. homeless in their day, yeah, yeah. So, but the first dog used by a police officer, a recognized police officer, was in Germany, was in 18, about 1890. Uh, there were also police officers in Belgium starting to use dogs about the same time. Mm -hmm. But as near as we can tell, the most, the very first one was, I cannot remember the dog's name, but he was a great Dane, and he was used by the night watchman constable, because they would hire, these small towns would hire a constable to walk, patrol the streets at night to keep the thieves away. And this old boy got <coughs> drunk by two or three, <laughs> two or three uh, punks, and did not appreciate the beating that he took, and so he went to the little town mayor, whatever you call a mayor in German. Pardon me, German folks. I don't know the right term. I apologize. New mayor. He's a mayor. Yeah, he's a mayor. Yeah. And he said, hey, you know, I'll, I'll keep doing this job, but I'm going to take my, I got this great day and I'm taking him with me. And that was the first use of a police dog. And it was a master. Fast forward to the 1900s. You have the KNPV formed in Holland. You had people, uh, you had, Belgium was using all sorts of Malinois, KNPV was using Malinois. The Germans had, Max von Stefanitz had perfected what we call the German Shepherd. And the difference was versatility. They used these herding dogs, and think about it. Herding dogs have been the original working with man dog 
breed that ever was. Mm -hmm. We had shepherds, you know, wait, and these dogs that they used had to follow vocal commands. Hand signals were invented for herding dogs that were, you know, 200 yards away. They could see a hand signal where they might not hear a command. Yep. So your shepherds are going to be way more versatile, capable of a lot. Not 100% at everything, but 80% at everything. So, and, and a, a, like Scott said, a little different bite, because he mentioned the bite on the Mastiff. Mm -hmm. The Mastiff's bite is gonna be extremely intense because they're defensive. It's gonna be hard like hell yeah, but it's gonna be shallow, shallower. The Shepherd's gonna grab a bad guy like he grabbed a rabbit, full mouth, firm, never getting away. Mm -hmm. So those, those are two of your most popular ones. What else we got for protection dogs these days, Scott? You know, there's terriers, terrier breeds. Yeah. You, yeah. Know, you got you know Roddies, Dobies, Conti Corsos. You know, I mean, when I, I get a kick out of it is a giant schnauzer. Gentle giant, mm -hmm. very deceiving. Very deceiving. Woo. Very deceiving. Very deceiving. Yeah, and and now when we're talking terriers, and, and I don't know for sure on this, so I'm not I'm not saying this is a fact, but I, I'm of the impression that Schnauzer, the Schnauzers, original Schnauzers, were the terriers of Germany. So. I know that it's the only breed with three different sizes, the miniature, the standard, and the giant. I also know that it's the only breed that has variations in size that was achieved by breeding one, one schnauzer back to a little bit bigger, schnauzer back to a little bit bigger, or vice versa, down a little. Most people, when they have big and small, they'll breed a small, uh, they'll breed a small, smaller Aussie to a border collie and they'll come up with a mini Australian Shepherd. Mm -hmm. They'll use different breeds to mix and match. Well, the Germans actually bred nothing but Schnauzer back to Schnauzer, which is why a giant Schnauzer has almost the same temperament as a miniature Schnauzer. But they're, and if someone knows uh, different, please correct me. Mm -hmm. uh, they are the terrier or what they're called what they were called the assassins of the bar barnyard, or now in modern terms, the ninja of the barnyard. Terriers' jobs were to keep the varmints away from the farmer's food. Go after rabbits, go after badgers, go after anything that uh, Airedale Terriers in England, again, England leading the way and, and, and great mm -hmm. dogs. Uh, they were going after Wolverines. I mean, they are bad, bad dudes. As protection dogs, you're, they have all the versatility of the Shepherd, German Shepherd. The problem you have is their their set point is a little, a little higher. So, which means because they've been bred to do things like, and they're mixed a lot of bulldog in with them as well. Mm -hmm. And this means a dog that would go out and grab a bull by the nose, and if he get thrown 50 feet in the air, jump right up and go back for more. They achieve this tenacity, this disregard for pain, by breeding dogs with a, a lower set point for adrenaline flow. So your pit bulls in a fighting arena, these are dogs that got more excitable, easier, at the sight of a stimulus and more adrenaline would pump into their system faster, which meant no matter what you were doing to them, no matter how painful it was, they wouldn't turn loose of the bite. One of the, one of the, my favorite stories about the American, or not the American, the original English Bulldog was there was a bet because they would, you know, that's, that was entertainment back then. You know, they didn't have cable. You know, they just, <laughs> You know, TVs were, they, they had sucky reception three, back in 1500. Three, yeah, three channels, three channels and rabbit ears. Yeah, yeah, no rabbit ears at all. So, so 
So the bull baiting was, was a big deal. And this one English king had a, a bulldog that was so great. And another Spanish king came over and said, my dog's better. And, and the English king said, my dog is so great that if he bites a bull, you could chop his head off and he wouldn't turn loose. And uh, the, they didn't have uh, PETA back then, I might mention before I finish this story. <laughs> uh, so they act, the way the story goes, they actually, they made a bet. They, you know, I don't know what it was, but it was a big bet. And they had the broadsword guy with his broadsword. And the English king sicked his great bulldog on the, the bull's nose. And he just, Rrr! and the broadswordsman took his sword and chopped his head off in one fell swoop, as they say. And the bull, the bulldog never released the bull's nose. What a waste of a dog. Yeah, yeah, but you know, yeah, he was a king. Hell, he had plenty. They were, they're never real smart. Man. No, no. Now, he did regret later that he had gotten no puppies from this dog. Yeah, you know. <laughs> so there was some, some remorse, you know. But this disregard for pain is accomplished through genetic breeding. And all that means, if you're using a terrier for your security dog, is they're going to be hot to go to the fight. They're going to be more difficult to control. So if you need to be able to release, get your dog to release, to out, and we'll, we'll jump into a few little training tricks for each one of these three types here. With a terrier, what I suggest, what's worked for me in the past, is I start working with balls, tugs, with a terrier the minute I get him. I don't worry about the bite. I don't worry about mm. teaching him an alert command. I just want him to go grab something and pull on it, and then I want it to die. I'll go real slack with it and just talk to him and give him my release command. Out, out. As soon as he outs, I may throw him another toy. But I won't do any bite development. I won't worry about any excitement. All that stuff's gonna come. Yep. Work on your control. If you want your pit bull, your American bully, your English, your American bulldog, your Johnson bulldog, if you want them to be a security dog, the bite's gonna come. They almost can't help it. Work okay. on your control work. That's what I've done with the Dobermans too. Tell us about Dobies. Well. And by the way, let me, let me, I'm gonna, Scott mentioned Dobies and Roddies. Roddies fall generally into the Mastiff category. Mm -hmm. People don't know what. Dobies don't fall in any damn care that category. Lewis Doberman invented that dog. No one knows what he, what breeds he put into him. I don't care what anyone tells you. Nobody knows. And they are their own creature. And this man is very familiar with that creature. Yeah, so they, uh, starting out, like you're saying, you know, just to introduce an introduction. It's all fun and games, but you've got to build a bond with that dog. And there's, there's, I've learned mm -hmm. there are certain, and we're going to get it tonight, we can do a podcast on it someday, but the techniques that you, once you learn the dog, any breeds like that, if you get shepherds, if you get, but these dogs here are a little different and they're very one owner oriented. Yep. I mean, they don't, you know, I got a, someone can vouch for that that's here right now that, you know. They can talk to him and tell him to out. He won't do it. If I get up there and start going through, and we're just this, this dog's just starting out. By the way, he's been doing bite work for what a month? I think maybe. Yeah, he's a year and three months right now. But we I started him as a pup, playing tug, uh, developing those skills, and it was a game, and it still is. But now I'm working to developing his positioning and his. He's got a good bite, just to say yeah, that. Yeah, he does. <laughs> yes, he does. But no, they are very, very one-person oriented. But as for protection, they are very alert. And they're smart as a whip. Mm. Some of the smartest dogs I've... You know, smart breed, but to me, you, they're up there top three. Yep, yep. You know, and uh, believe it or not, they're, they're rational. They rationalize things. You know, but when, they, when it's time to go, there's nothing faithful to the end but bite wise they uh unbelievable it's great you know so the, the bite i've said this and and there there are several folks that under their breath have disagreed with me greatly come on out we can prove it wrong uh -huh. just come on out 
Yeah. Put a suit the, on. The hardest biting dogs I've ever had the privilege of being in the mouth of. And remember that part I just said. I've had the privilege of being in their mouth when they were fighting and not necessarily wearing any equipment. <laughs> mm. Pound for pound, inch for inch. I think because of the the length of their muzzle and the mechanics of, of the, the skull and the jaw bones, to me, Doberman's the hardest biting damn dog on the planet. Yeah, and, and then the, both their techniques, if you watch them, they are, to remind me of a bulldog, on the, they, they want to pull. They're coming, yeah, they're yeah, bringing. Yeah. The other night, uh, <laughs> I got wood floors in my house and Mina likes to play tug with the dogs. With the puppies, and she—that's that's her thing. We took Aries, let Aries out, and got him to tug with her. Well, she went to the ground on her back, and she was holding the tug of this. He drugged that sixty-five pound, pound child around the whole house. He just <laughs> drug her around, pulling her around the house. Yeah, I but, can believe it. Yep. But so, no. But uh, as for as for uh, uh, guard dogs, and they're great, and if they're raised right, you know, to me, they're good with families and everything else. So. Well, and one last story about the Doberman. <clears throat> the problem with the Doberman is they're so damn smart. And originally, you know, in the, the when when the U.S. Army started its, its canine corps in World War II, the Marines decided they wanted nothing but Dobermans because of their fighting ability. And Iwo Jima, the first ever American monument to dogs, was or to the devil dogs that the Marines used in Iwo Jima. Um, and, and originally they wanted to have nothing but Dobermans in their core. Now, they ended up going away from the Dobermans to German Shepherds like everyone else did, probably back in the 50s. Um, there's lots of reasons given for it, availability and other stuff. Popularity of the German Shepherd. German Shepherds were, were cheap from Germany because mm -hmm. after World War II they were, the country was broke, devastated, and you know they could produce dogs. Uh, I personally feel that the main reason that the Marine Corps didn't stick with the Dobermans was what they discovered after they started in peacetime a Marine Corps mm -hmm. was that uh, the Dobermans were usually a lot smarter than the handlers <laughs> and so it didn't go well <laughs> if you get it my drift. Yeah. Um, so, but no, dogs are, dogs are definitely high on my list. But you better not treat them like you do every other dog. And no. I don't. I don't say that about any breed. No, and they're one person dogs. They're hard. You can't. It's hard to hand off a trained Doberman to. I couldn't hand it off to you. Probably I could with you. But like, uh, train him and get him to a certain point, or get him fully trained. Let's say that. Right. And then try to give him to somebody else to do those commands. Ain't gonna happen. You ain't gonna do it. Nope. You just, that's it. It's you and only you. That's it. They're very one person oriented. Mm -hmm. Very. The only other one that's similar that I've dealt with would be our Western Shepherd. Yeah. Which. Yeah, McCoy's like that. And we, this one here is with her. Yeah. yeah. Already. Yeah. yeah. So we, we got one here. We'll, we'll show it in a minute. Some people asked about they saw last week. She was doing a little fooling around with her pup. You know, the, the German. All right. So when we're talking about shepherds and bite work, remember, we're talking about all herding dogs. That means Border Collies, Australian Shepherds, all herding dogs have a stronger sense of protection than most dogs. The Ridgeback fall into that category? Nah, Ridgebacks are lion hunting dogs. The Koi Koi dogs. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. they're just badasses, you yeah. know. That's uh, wondering. Yeah, uh, so, any of the herding dogs are gonna, it's what I call pack responsibility. And the herding dogs have it a little more higher degree than a lot of other dogs. Um, the Western Shepherds, when we're talking about shepherds for protection working line dogs, we are not speaking of any show line shepherds. And granted, there's gonna be some out there that'll be great. But you're going to have to go through 27 of them to find out one that's great. And then you've got so many health problems. So when I started my Western Shepherd project almost 20 years ago now, uh, 
the idea was not to make a breed. I'm not saying I made a breed. The idea was to get modern shepherd dogs back to the standard they were when Von Steffenitz started the breed in the 1890s. And you've achieved, and, you've, and I, th I think we got there. come around, yeah, I would yeah. say. Yeah. You know, I'm not, see a lot of German shepherds come out and they're great dogs, yeah. all of them, but yeah. you can see the, the weak, the, the, I call them low riders, because they're, yeah. they're, they're like this. Yeah. Their, their back legs, their hips are displaced, and it's really bad because they're, they're yep. misformed. And their athletic ability is lacking. And it's sad because the, I'm not going to say anybody's, any, any organization's name, but they have that standard in their shows to be like that. You know? Yeah, yeah. So. It's ridiculous. You know, we get, what we're, what we're trying to do, what we tried to do or ended up with with the, with the Western Shepherds were, I believe, we have almost as intelligent as a Doberman. I've, of course, always been partial to my Danes. Uh, and Bart is an amazing 110 pound, lean, very lean 110 pound dog who as a yearling can run at 40 miles an hour. So we have athleticism, which was the second thing I was worried about. Uh, incidentally, we got no undercoat, so we don't have near the shedding. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, I think we kind of got a little bit of the Mastiff with our size. We got a little bit of the terrier with our our fighting ability, and we got all the intelligence of. They're intelligent. They're, yeah. They're very very. You got you can show them. A couple times. Yeah. And going back to the Dobermans, but you can show him and repeat. You don't have to stop with him. You can sit there and show him something. Right. Three or four times, not stop. Four mm -hmm. or five times. And he wants to do it. And eventually, they'll give you the, you know, whatever, but. The shepherds are the same thing. The Western shepherds are. Hell, even in bite work, they come up like this. They're, they're the quick one. The, they're the quickest ones we've to worked learn. Yeah. to learn to go from a tug oh. to a sleeve. I, I'm actually going to put up some video this week on our Facebook page of six-month-old Western shepherds and one Western shepherd who was a year old who never had any bite work, mm -mm. and we and, and, and he went from a sin. I mean, from a sack to a sin in 45. I'll put those videos up, but... Oh, Winnie, Winnie's the same way. Oh, yeah. Oh, my little bits is she's pretty salty. I'm bits. Really it's bits. It's not Winnie. Yeah, this Winnie. ain't the golden years, all right? Yeah. <laughs> well, it is, but it's not. So we're we're going we're gonna, to... We're gonna, I'll tell you what. We'll just... I've got a training regimen I suggest to people who are not here locally. If you get a Western Shepherd pup, we automatically throw in obedience lessons because I want to see the intelligence level of, of these pups when they're grown. So I want them trained. If you don't live locally, what I suggest, and that's what Carol Ann's done with this dog, what I suggest is go online, get you a really good obedience training book, take that, order you that book, give it to your pup, come back two weeks later and start giving her the commands after she's read the book. Now, you think I'm joking? That's what Carol Ann did with Traveler. Carol Ann, show us what, what Traveler learned from reading her book. <laughs> okay. I'll take the camera. All right. Partners, folks, we're going to get around here. Traveler was sleeping. That's little Traveler. Traveler. This is an 11-week-old pup. Hold on, Caroline. Let me get a little further away from you. Yeah. Let's go. You're down, command. Traveler, stay. Can you walk away from your puppy? There you go. And that's our release word. We're not supposed to move until we hear the word OK. Okay, Ready? We've been practicing. Come on. Kneel. Come on. She should sit automatically. There you go. Traveler. That's 11 weeks old. Now she's going to walk with her. And she stops. And the dog stops and sits. Very nice, Carol Ann. So we And we will... Uh, in the notes down below, we'll get the name of the book that uh, 
Traveler read, and you can let your uh, Western Shepherd read the same book, and you get the same results when they're 11 weeks old. <laughs> so, what do we think, folks? There's there's our technical director. Hello. They're pretty smart. Yeah. This is my second one. Her second one. Yep. My second one. What do you think, Scott? I think that, you know, tonight was just going over the breeds and everything else, but try to give help people out and pick what they really need and what they want to have in their life and what they need a dog for and to pick the right dog for themselves. There you go. So there's, there's a lot of breeds out there. Uh, if you ever need help, uh, you know, we'll sure we can give, give us a call if you need some information on a breed or yep. maybe some quality yeah. breeders. We, I'll try to keep a list so we'll, you know, it's, we'll let you know. And uh, so until then, what do you think, Scott? I think it's all about picking the right dog for yourself. But all, in the end, it's all about the dogs. Every time, every time. Hey, folks, Peace see you out. next week. We'll see you. Thank you. There you go, Caroline.